Hey guys, quick announcement before I dive right in. Tomorrow at 5 p.m. Central Time, I'm gonna be interviewing Steve McRae, the host and founder of The Great Debate Community. And for the first time ever, if you guys would like to join in that conversation, I'm gonna open it up to patrons to come and ask questions on the show and maybe give some feedback and stuff and engage in that conversation. So after about 20 minutes of interview, then we'll open it up to you guys. For everyone else, the live chat will still be available, but I wanted to be able to kind of connect with you guys a little bit more and give back to, to those of you who are patrons. If you're not a patron and you'd like to join in that conversation and want to find out how to become a patron, I'll put a link in the description below. I look forward to seeing you guys. Do you guys remember Godless Cranium? I had him on my channel a month or two ago. Well, a few weeks back, he asked me and a couple of other YouTubers to put together a video where we encourage the audience to imagine a world without religion. Well, apparently this triggered some religious fanatics and they went and false flagged the video as offensive content. This video has been flagged into a limited state, which means the comments, ratings, and share features have been turned off and YouTube won't recommend it to anyone. On top of that, it received a legal complaint and has been blocked from view in several countries. Luckily, neither of these things has resulted in any sort of strike against my channel which is good, but it's still garbage. There was absolutely nothing offensive whatsoever about this video. If imagining a world without religion is so scandalous, then how come YouTube hasn't demonetized and restricted the Beatles? Imagine there's no heaven and no religion too. Now, in response, Godless Cranium has asked anyone and everyone with a YouTube channel to mirror this video if they can, to show these anti-free speech zealots that if they use these slimy types of tactics to try to silence one of us, it'll be like cutting off the head of a hydra, and even more will spring up to take its place, making their work cut out for them. So I'm going to place the link to the video in the description box, and if you want to mirror it on your channel, I would appreciate it. If you haven't seen it, please give it a watch, and if you think YouTube is right and it should be considered offensive hate speech, then that's cool. But if you don't, then please mirror it if you can. I think false flagging on YouTube has got to be challenged. It happens far too often, and the only way I can see to challenge it is to come together as a community of YouTubers who are tired of having their speech silenced or muted by offended snowflakes and say enough. So here it is. If you're sick of people trying to silence atheists by false flagging channels, or even if you're religious but you care about free speech, then I hope that you'll take a stand and mirror this video on your channel as well. Enjoy. Religion in U.S. worth more than Google and Apple combined. Huh, that's crazy. That's just in the U.S. Imagine how much it would be worldwide. Faith economy worth $1.2 trillion a year, more than combined revenues of 10 biggest tech firms in America, study shows. Religion in the United States is worth $1.2 trillion a year, making it equivalent to the 15th largest national economy in the world, according to a study. The faith economy has a higher value than the combined revenues of the top 10 technology companies in the U.S., including Apple, Amazon, and Google, says the analysis from Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. <sighs> Imagine a world where that money went towards humanitarian aid or medical research. Wouldn't that be something? <sighs> Imagine a world. Imagine a world. Imagine a world. Imagine a world. Imagine a world where you never read the headline, Faith Healing Parents Charged with Murder in Death of Premature Twin Baby. The Mitchells, driven by religion, failed to send for medical aid when their newborn baby stopped breathing. The baby died mere hours later. If not for the intervention of the medical examiner, her twin sister may have died as well. This is nothing new. The mother's own sister was sentenced to six years in prison for the death of her newborn son. Worse, the majority of states have laws protecting parents and religious leaders from prosecution for child neglect, abuse, or even death for withholding medical care on religious grounds. And abetted by this legal cover, at least 140 children have died of perfectly treatable medical conditions in the United States from 1975 to 1995. Imagine a world without needless suffering from faith healing. Imagine a world where the bigots had to admit that their gay hatred is their own idea, where they can't say it's not them, it's just their God's commands. Imagine a world with no religious arguments against gay marriage, where nobody was stoned or beheaded just for being queer. Imagine a world where nobody had to be ashamed to reveal their true self. Imagine a world with no religion. 
Imagine a world without religious wars, without violent acts of terrorism rooted in brainwashed indoctrination, where we unite to build a world worth living in rather than suicide bombing a crowd to escape it. Imagine a world in which people didn't claim jurisdiction over the experience of others based on what they've taken on faith. Imagine a world where L. Ron Hubbard, the founder of Scientology, would have never been born. Therefore, we would have never been introduced to such a stupid, illogical, dumb belief system. But instead, this religion today is worth over $1.75 billion. This money, if L. Ron Hubbard would have never been born, could have easily went into scientific endeavor for kids, for schools, for reason, and philosophy and logic. But too bad. That would be a good world to imagine. Imagine a world where nothing said or written was taken on the authority of the speaker or writer, where every claim was accepted only proportionally to the supporting evidence, where such evidence and the interpretation was continually challenged and therefore improved, where the support for the claims was not only readily available to everyone, it was frequently accessed by everyone. When I imagine a world without religion, I don't necessarily imagine a perfectly peaceful world. What I do imagine, however, is a world where we are living in a reality where people are killing over their imaginary friends every single day. I don't imagine a world where people would always have reasonable discussions despite a difference in ideas. But what I do imagine is a world where people aren't scared for their lives when they criticise or discuss others' ideas. A world where we don't make excuses for extremists because someone offended their religion. Imagine a world without organized religion, particularly Islam. A world where freedom of ideas doesn't mean a risk to human lives every single day. Imagine a world without hijab, where you can see the wind blow through an Iranian girl's luscious, beautiful hair. Or at least imagine a world without niqab, where you can brush your hand across her smooth skin on her face. Or at least imagine a world without burqa, so at the very least you can see her eyes. Or better yet, how about imagine a world without Islam? Imagine a world where no one spends precious time and money on treatments of disease which are not evidence-based. Countless lives are lost every year because people fall victim to pseudoscientific practices that just simply don't work. Often, these practices are based on beliefs involving the supernatural. Regardless of their origin, though, practices without an evidential basis are dangerous when relied upon as medical treatment. As a result, effective treatments are disregarded, and fatal diseases are allowed to run their full course, ultimately tearing grandparents from their grandkids, tearing mothers and fathers from their children, and in strokes of the cruelest form of cosmic injustice, tearing children from all those who cherish them above all else. Envision a reality where no belief in pseudoscience or the supernatural, which allow for such offenses to humanity, exist, and ask yourself, would such a reality be one with fewer atrocities in favor of greater health and happiness? In doing this, you take the first step in making that reality our very own. Imagine a world where people gave serious thought to questions of why we love, why we feel wonder and awe, and why we consider some actions moral and others immoral. Where we continue to plumb the depths of these mysteries, using what we learn to make ourselves and society better instead of just deciding they're all inevitably spiritual concepts that had to come from God. Oh, and where nobody claims there can't possibly be secular answers to these questions just because they themselves chose to stop thinking about them. Imagine a world that wasn't saturated by mainstream religion. Religious messages have been so normalized, people will take on very baggage-heavy labels as a default. Out of peer pressure, it's what's expected of them to do even if they don't truly believe. And thus, undue reverence is given to ideas that are as equally absurd as any other mythology we have left far behind us. This normalizing of religion is the stagnation in society. And this prevents an honest, critical dialogue from actually happening. Imagine we could strip all of the emotion out of these arguments, all of the heritage, all of the baggage, and debate the ideas based solely on their merit. We would have won already. Imagine a world in which people didn't pretend to know things that they can't possibly know. Imagine a world without religious moral authorities. When faced with an action that conflicts with our conscience, we tend to rationalize it to avoid the mental conflict between doing something bad and being a decent person, one way being to project the responsibility onto an authority. If there were no morally authoritative religions in the world, 
then people wouldn't have the option to shunt responsibility onto an intangible, infallible, unchallengeable moral authority. Knowingly harmful actions, in terms of prejudicial or even violent acts, couldn't be excused by obeying the will of God. Of course, this isn't applicable to all religions nor all religious people, and of course there'd still be harmful acts and human authorities to appeal to, but no human authority is intangible, and any would be infinitely less infallible and unchallengeable than the moral commandments that are held with conviction to be the decree of God. Imagine a world where religious reverence isn't used as a shield for pedophiles so that they can be recirculated into finding new victims in new areas. Imagine a world where children aren't scared of eternal damnation in hell just for being themselves. They can go out, be free, love who they want to, and not have to worry about burning forever in a lake of fire. Imagine in a world where religion didn't teach that prayer or communicating with God would fix all of the world's problems. For example, after a natural disaster such as the recent hurricanes, people would potentially donate more money instead of gathering for prayer. Let's stick to what we know actually helps instead of communicating to a God we can't prove is there and who supposedly created the hurricane to begin with. Imagine a world where morals and rules aren't dictated by ancient texts, but are allowed to develop and evolve as society changes. Can you imagine how far along medicine would be if religion hadn't stepped in the way of stem cell research? Granted, we'd be farther along with regards to all medicine, but my focus is actually stem cell. There's so many things that stem cells can do. I myself took a bullet to the knee, and I was told last year that there's now a new therapy to basically regrow my knee. All pain would stop, my nerve cells would grow back. And my doctor told me that if it wasn't for all the blocking advances, this probably could have happened years ago. It's absolutely infuriating the fact that someone's religious views have basically kept me and others in pain. I mean, this is something that could stop pain. It could help with cancer. They're doing research on stem cells versus cancer. I think about things like Huntington's disease and Parkinson's. Could stem cells help in that? How far would we have been if this field was not grinded to a halt by the religious? How much farther would we be? And if it were to suddenly stop, no more opposition, imagine how far we could go. Imagine a world without honor killing, where gays don't fear for their lives and where women everywhere are given equal respect and an equal voice and are treated like human beings rather than assimilating faceless into an ocean of silent black trash bags. 